Hello there, everyone. I'm Mr. Mocha Lover, and thank you for joining me here in TNO, the Losses of Europe, in which we need to talk about brothers of the shadows. Theodore Oberlander did not know Reinhard Galen well, only on a personal level, but he knew of him. The man who had been well known to have spies under every corner during the Second World War, and Oberlander guessed by his appointment to the head of the Reich's new intelligence agencies. He had not curbed his activities in that field. He would serve as Speer's dagger in the dark, while the Gestapo had previously served as the big old group's club in the night. <clears throat> Oberlander was not stupid enough to not know what it meant. Now, a small metal dot has found its way to the bottom of Oberlander's desk as he had been informed earlier that morning Speer had failed to remove Oberlander during the entire purges, and now it seemed he was on Galen's list of people to watch closely. <clears throat> this attempt to have Oberlander kill was more subtle than the last one, but this time Speer had failed to catch him unaware, and Oberlander expected he would continue to fail in later attempts. One side effect of working in the Reich's intelligence programs was one tended to trust their team with their life. It was odd, given how much of the profession was built around lying and mistrust, but if you could not act swiftly and unflinchingly based on the information of the other agents, you were not in the correct profession. That level of trust, tested again and again, tended to build up some sort of bond, even if the Reich tried their hardest to ensure friendships did not form. Those bonds, it seemed, were strong enough for Oberlander's old compatriots from the Abwehr to enlighten him of the new R&D's plans for him. With a grimace, Oberlander pried loose the listening device letting it fall to the ground as the heel of his well-polished shoe shined and grinded the bug to dust. The president of the Reichstag considered sending a bouquet of flowers and thanks. Another attempt failed. But right now, okay, so right now I'm going to, I tried it, the, trying to get the intelligence agency as you guys recommended first. Try that out and try to use them. So that we can go ahead and get some more, well, weekly stability, but regime stability. And I've also gone ahead and not done the... Uh, Auslan yet, so we're 52%. We'll see what happens. Uh, this is just, and we're kind of, I'm kind of currently redoing these two, so we can hopefully do no exceptions. We'll see in just a little bit, but before we fade and fade out, I do want to address a couple comments. A lot of you guys recommend I actually use cheats to get all, get all this stuff done to for full reformist. We'll see. I have something in mind if we don't use cheats, so maybe we'll see. So I recommend I actually use the old thumbnail. So I'm like, okay, sure, why not? That was actually really good artwork from the, one of the guys. Um, who posted it on the Reddit. So that's not my art artwork. The guy who did the artwork, I actually, in the last video, linked to his Reddit page where I found it. So if I'd say, go give him a thumbs up or whatever on Reddit, just because that's where I knew where his account was from. And I think he's now on the dev team. I'm not really sure. But anyways. Uh, see, so you guys recommend using the Intelligence Agency for stability. Someone recommends we win as many of the great games as possible to win and lock down Europe. I like that idea. I really do like that idea quite a bit. So we're kind of redoing this, which I'll work on as well. Which we're actually, we might actually be able to get. What is this? Hungry with us? Uh, I think so. Um, which one is this? I think it is hungry. Um, yeah, it is. Cool. Let's see. Apparently, you guys said completing these decisions, like you said before. Um, where is it? Right here. This can all. This can wait. And actually, if you complete these, you might actually be able to get some more regime stability because of this. And when the slave revolt happens, change your social outlook, of course, which is what we're trying to do, and just things that you can do to make sure it's successful. So I'll see you in just a little bit. All right, everyone. So here we're at, and I've spent about 40 minutes trying to get this one bad word focus complete, and I actually was able to do it without console commands, but I only had, like, leeway of, like, a single day. But for now, to continue on with the focuses... What we're going to do is, uh, well, actually we're a little bit too low right here. Let's go back up to the country, so, because we can do the fortress up north. As the Burger Creek raged on, Josef Tebowen shocked the Reich by dismantling our northern Reichskommissariat and sending its garrison back to Germany. As of now, the newly self-professed leader of Norway will receive our full attention, and we will plot how to best approach the future of this nation. So we unlock some more focuses to do, while we are definitely, definitely, definitely going to struggle with this one. They're a great game, just like so many others before it. So too has Norway finally escaped a grasp under cover of the Burger Krieg. However, that does not mean that they can no longer be useful to our administration. Herr Speer is a benevolent man and is willing to not only leave the free Norwegians in peace, but to work with them again and reintroduce them to the sphere as something more than such and subhumans. The redefined friendship. If we are to successfully pull Norway back into the fold, we will need to redefine the special relationship between our two nations. No amount of bribery or sweet talking will make the Norwegians forget how they were treated during. <clears throat> Hitler's reign. Now without proof that things will be different. From now on, the no German-Norwegian relationship dynamic shall be one of the master and not be one of the master and servant, but one of cooperation and partnership between the two equals in standing, or at least until we can re-establish our network of influence. This is the impression that we'll give. 
So, uh, actually, I'll be honest here, we might actually have to just like sit here and not do any focuses. Now, you have to have the intelligence branch here. You, you have to have it, because it, there's decisions in here that allows you to unlock or just get more stability. And we gotta keep an eye on this one here too, because we gotta do this one, pretty much. You just gotta do these as much as possible. So we're at 60%, we need at least 75%, and you have 75%, and it drops below 75% while you're doing the focus, the focus will cancel. So that's good to keep in mind. Actually, we're gonna win this one too, so it'll be two to one. So hopefully we can win there as well. We do need a hold of speech, will barely help us out, but it is what it is. Um, yeah, we just gotta keep an eye on this one down here. So 12, if it goes any uh, any higher than 12, then we'll come back, come back over here. But, clear of ideology. The memories of the occupation have left the Norwegians expectedly, yet uncomfortably, adverse to the ways of national daddyism. And it's probably a fair assumption that the policies their leaders pursue might start to widely deviate from our own, as our government is restructured. However, Norway's potential services to us are too great to abandon over matters of ideological homogeneity, which is already being disenfranchised or disentrenched at home at the home front. If this agreement is to succeed, we will have to tolerate and ignore any political differences between our nations, and allow the Norwegians to actually govern themselves any way they deem withdraw German advisors. The young Norwegian nation no longer has any need for German monitors in its government, and in fact is very vocally dissatisfied with their continued presence there. As a first gesture of goodwill to the young administration, we shall officially withdraw any and all German advisors and bureaucrats currently stationed in Norway. Cool. So yeah, like, this is not easy. I spent 40 minutes on this stuff, man. I don't think I'll be able to do this again and spend that much time trying to get one thing done, because I think we're kind of at the limit of <clears throat> getting things accomplished here. But now we're back up here, and we can do anything here? Oh, maybe not. What else can we do here that's special? Pakistan becomes independent, but no one gives a crap about Pakistan right now. Uh, maybe later on we can care about it more, but right now, oh boy. Oh boy. Yeah, I'm glad. Oh, we can do this one too. Uh, Unternehmen Gehilfe, as well as Unternehmen Kondor. I don't know what that does, but we might as well try it, right? For as much of a dude mongrel state as Iberia is, Frank and Salazar have earned some of our respect for their strength of will and determination to keep their states alive. It would truly be a shame if Iberia were to follow the separatists, especially those that seem so to lean so right in ideology, to prevent the specter of Bolshevism from returning to Europe. We will send operatives to sabotage these separatists and their devious plots, giving the advantage to the Iberian Agencia, anti-separatista forces. Additionally, in doing so, perhaps we will also finally be able to convince Iberians that the Reich is an ally rather than a threat. Well, we'll see. I kind of doubt that gives us more stability, but, you know, I, I literally don't know the time it's recording, but we'll see. We shall see. Third of ideology. Withdraw Jimin advisors. Sehr gut. Un... yeah. Hmm. We'll see. Accept Norwegian bureaucrats. Now that our representatives in the government of Norway are officially withdrawn and safely back in the fatherland, we must formally recognize and guarantee the sovereignty of the native Norwegian bureaucrats taking their place. From now on, the Norwegian people are allowed to fully govern themselves any way they deem correct, unchained from Germany at a legal level. Well, those things go really, really south. And then we'll have some fun stuff to do. Cool. And keep an eye. I'm just going to have to periodically pause just to make sure that we get everything here. So, Condor is going on. Uh, bugging enemies. Oh, currently we're doing the mod moder modernize something here. Third of the way through. Which actually, eh, that's not quite that. Get more quickly stability. This one would not be good to do. Just because you lose a lot of regime stability, which is something we want to avoid, please. Man, trying to get the regime to lean a different way is... Uh, kind of sucks. <laughs> kind of sucker, he knows. But that one's okay. So we're going to go look up for a while with all Jimmy advises. Oh, we have one more thing we can do here. What is it? Aha! Here it is. Bribe political enemies. The R&D keeps a healthy supply of funds that it can distribute to those who are more swayed by promises of wealth rather than their own ideological constraints. We will seek these men out and offer them luxurious, if not slightly costly deals, which should acquire some dissenting voices. Nice. It, it only costs a little bit of money. That's all. Just a wee bit of cash. Followed up with what? The Northern Foothold. With international contacts, yes. Norway's independence and ideological distance from the Reich seems just like another obstacle to circumvent. When in reality, they could very well prove to be a brand new opportunity for a regime to exploit. Seen internationally as an independent player to interact with and very soon to woo over on one respective side. On the world stage, Oslo can become a valuable diplomatic middleman with the outside world, giving us far greater access to establish contacts with both our rivals and our future prospects. Through their own channels, and our free willed and much more internationally amicable ally in the North will be avenging for our interests announcing them as theirs. The from the front. Wilhelm was giddy with excitement as he entered the museum. A museum? His first trip outside the city without his parents. His class had just won a visit to the newly appointed Berger Kriegs Museum in Hamburg, now and now 25 boys between 9 and 10 years old, along with the two teachers, had left Eimshorn for the great metropolis, or Elmshorn. Everyone was in awe at what they saw. Each room had its theme, 
urban warfare with reconstructed trenches. Politics with an analysis of what caused the civil war. Espionage with the tactics used by the contenders again upper hand. Finally, the last room scene was letters from the front with hundreds of missives sent by soldiers or militiamen to their dear ones during the war. Wilhelm looked at one of the cases and started reading Der Krimheld. I miss you so much. You have no idea how much I want to, would like to return to you home. To return to you, but I cannot. Hadrish has sent his wolves. Do you remember the small restaurant where we dined during last year's holiday? They hanged half of the village outside there. The rest are digging trenches for the SS. I won't let this happen to you. I swear upon my life. They'll probably attack tomorrow and I'll be ready. I'll keep your photo next to my heart. If I die, I'll die with your, with your name on my lips. I love you. A small plaque said, Eberhard Yank killed in action. Wilhelm trembled at the words he just read and asked his teacher, T Teacher, who was, who was Hadrish? The teacher's expression immediately turned sour, but he looked calmly at the boy and answered, Hadrish was handsome, but was, was a man who wanted to see the world burn, and he was committed to see his desires realized. Tell me, Wilhelm, do you want it too? Do you want to see the world burn? No, said the child. I want a happy world. I want to go with Mama and Papa to have fun. The teacher's face turned jovial again and chuckled, patting the boy's head. Come on, it's late. Then he raised his voice, class, time to go. I hope the visit was instructive. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> oh, kids. Oh, kids. And, yes. International contracts, or contacts, with a northern foothold. Removing all German politicians and commanders from Norway so it was necessary to warm Oslo to the idea of cooperation, but... It was not in our best interest. We are still, after all, not an international charity. Yes, all future ambitions in the North still require some sort of, however small, foothold in Norwegian affairs. Our mission will be small and effective. A few packed observers will be assigned in the ministry to monitor government going-ons, and a few German officers to drill the troops and coordinate joint exercises with the packed forces, as well as legal provisions for future German reinforcements and garrisons, you know. Just in case. Just in case. Very good. Yeah, I gotta pause this a whole lot, just because we don't have that much time, because we're at 57%, and then we can do this one as well, because we just gotta do this as fast as possible, and we will have to, I will use vast political promises for this one. So, not bad. We're 12 again. These focuses are very short, which makes sense. Uh, I'm just literally waiting for the next one. Oh. Mm, I should have realized... that This one keeps costing more and more and more. Holy crap. 62% is not good, but we're waiting for one of these other ones to pop up here, so... I do apologize for all the pausing. Cool. I know the foothold. Come on, pop this one out. I know this one, it's going to hurt us for a little bit. That's okay. And I think, yeah, we'll definitely have to go through um, some focuses. Oh, we went down by one. Does that mean this finished? Ah, it did. Good. Um, Send military advisors. Give hungry arms. Or this one. Oh, I'll send in the military advisors. I like to go big and go, just go big first of all. We can probably still win there, which would be nice. Uh, let's see. Nope. All right. Keep an eye on this one. We're at eight right now. Oh, and? Oh, the Divine Men. Okay. Men is one. Common with a Severe looks pretty nice. And then we'll do what? Let's do this one. To say that our reputation on Norway is not stellar would be an understatement. No matter how cooperative the government is to our advances, the average Norwegian would rather die, and most likely will, than allow Germania to meddle in their affairs again. Occupiers are otherwise. The situation is precarious enough to endanger the current Norwegian administration itself, and our interests lying within it by proxy. Both with our hearts and minds offensive, and in, in coordination with the government's own propaganda programs, we must do everything we can to remedy this post-haste. Absolutely. Anything else here real quick? The budget is almost done. We still have a, more than enough budget, so allotment is totally fine. I'm literally just waiting for this one thing here. Literally just the one thing. Uh, anything else? Ooh, yes. Well, we need to get up to four. Ooh, give hungry arms. There are three right now. Um, let's do two to three first. See what happens. Mm, no, not yet. Strengthen our prestige and Kron and Reichsmark. Many people in the Reich live, and even more have died in the Bürgerkrieg, and with the notion that fire and blood is the only way to keep a nation subjugated. But Herr Speer is a different man. He has proven so many times already, and already has his own battles planned. The Norwegian Krone is critically unstable ever since the country won its independence, and Norway is very unlikely to turn down an offer to peg their currency to our own Reichsmark and reverse this downward spiral. In but a couple of years, this move will provide us greater control over all of Norwegian matters than it ever offered them economic prosperity, both of which we seek to fully exploit. Alright, so we had another one pop up here, which is what? Uh, it's not there yet. Gosh, dang it. Seriously, what popped up here? No, these are all... I apologize. It's just, you gotta be just insane to do it like this. I think I'm going insane doing this. Nope, not, not there yet. We have ten decisions, though. Military investments. Ah, another one. Good. Keep going for those. 
Keep going up. Come on, let's go. Ward 6 and 6. That's good to keep an eye on that. Keep an eye on this one, too. Oh, man. Come on, come on, come on. I'm waiting for this little one to pop up. Because if it doesn't pop up, we're not going to be able to get it done. Uh, it's the one about traders, I think, and stuff like that. So, light aircraft. Let's grab that one. Oh, well, there goes that one. So, I think for now... I don't want to do this, but we'll have to let time go on. That's kind of the part of the... There it is. No. Token liquid forms. We definitely need to do that one. 57% so bad. Here it is. So, we need charged reactions with treason again. So, we're going to have to... Have to let a few days go by. I'm not really sure if that's really going to impact the game at all. Like, if we delay our, doing our focuses, obviously the oil crystals will hit no matter what. It's probably really a bad, bad idea to do this, but I'm going to let time go on. And, uh, yeah. You know what? Just in case, I'm going to save. Because the last time I did this, I literally had, like, one day leeway with this. So, let's do that. And I don't want to do this. But we're going to do this. It's going to reach stability by 10%. But we'll get, ultimately, 20 more percent overall. So, because I, I want to get this one done. I We are going to get no exceptions done, I swear to God. At the cost of this entire campaign, so be it. Ooh, the Pacific Light. I like that one. I don't know why, just, it sounds like a lot of fun. So, begin operations in the Pacific. Provide reconnaissance missions. It doesn't cost us anything, so why not? Um, I think we need to keep our PP here. I would love to do stuff here, but realistically, um, I think it's just best to keep our PP. Uh, the... I don't really care about Indonesia. I'll be honest right now. Maybe another campaign. Oh, hold speeches. We, we gotta do it. There's nothing we can do. So what we gotta do, we're gonna let about a month go by. And this is probably a, just a bad idea. But let's see. Oh, sure. Let's see. Let's open that one back up. Do we get any focuses we can do here, maybe? I'll throw it in there. I've already read this one, so we're gonna read that one again. Please go right ahead. Boom. There we go. Oh, uh, crud. The polls have refused. Because I, too, would also like to get this one done as well. It's only seven days. Um... Actually, do we get more stability if we get them done? Oh my goodness, I don't know. I really don't know. So, this is what we're going to do. I'm going to wait a month, and, I and I'll be right back when we get the one done. Help from outside. The two men who entered Commandant Marco's office were not the standard AAS agents. They slipped through his door, and he knew it. They carried themselves with an air that was so often missing from the office that Marcos had nearly forgotten how it looked to be among real professionals, of course. Even if Marcos had been less observant, the German eagles that adorned their identification would have given it away. He raised an eyebrow as he gestured to the two seats, which they took. Marcos began politely, my friends. Welcome to Iberia. My name is Marcos Arroyo. You are agents Lo and Tiger, yes? The two agents nodded, their eyes tracing the room, floating across the bookshelves filled with files and cluttered desks once again. I offer my deepest thanks to your government for sending such experienced aides. May we see some of your files, after action reports, surveillance alike. One of the two chimed in. Marcos wasn't sure which was Tig and which was Love, but he handed some folders over to the men. They opened them up, chattering among themselves. Marcos strained to hear, but soon realized that they weren't speaking Spanish, and after a few minutes, they set the files back down. Now, Commandant Marcos, what you and the AAS have here is a start. There's certainly room for improvement, and we will help you get there now. Shall we begin? Of course. Alright everyone, so right now we gotta do some research, of course. It is August 25th, and it's, I'm probably gonna regret doing things like this, such as letting time go on without doing any focuses, because we probably have a little bit amount of time. But right now, I've already taken vast political promises. I don't like taking that one, but I at least want to get this one done. So we have 78% of the way there. Uh, we're doing holding a speech just in case, because obviously the stability will go down. Uh, let's invest in education, poverty reducing, tradesmanship. That's really good stuff to do. Um, down here, unfortunately, oh, this stuff's all okay. Actually, we can unter unternehmen gehilfe. But there's a good chance we won't be successful, so I don't want to do that one yet. Um, and the Pacific War is still alight. Also, instead of men winning, I think it was Akuts this time, that one. I don't know, it's random every single time. I'm, I've spent an extra half hour off screen, again, trying to get this done. And unfortunately, we're not going to be able to get hungry. But I'd rather get our focuses done. Hungry can just go burn, I guess, for now. We'll try to get hungry whenever I try the conservative route, but this is taking a lot. So we're at 80%, which is not too bad, but... And there we are. Look at that. No exceptions. I don't know if I read this one, but if you want to read about this, please go right ahead. I've been doing this for, like, off-screen for over an hour. Like, so we got it done at great cost, but the new Reichsmark. Not even a year ago, saving Germany's economy was thought impossible by international observers. They cited our dependence on forced labor, an excess of war plunder, and the uncontrolled inflation caused by Hitler's policies. They thought our hopes for prosperity doomed. They were wrong. Ludwig Erhard, 
financial was it extraordinaire has already proven himself the most viable member of the Spiel's cabinet. His reforms seem so common sense yet the staunch conservatism of the NSDAP prevented them from entering political discourse until Spiel took power. There are only a few more changes to be imposed, rules to break and old wisdom to be discarded, and then the economy will be truly on the road to recovery. Let this be a lesson learned. The Führer is beyond reproach. His absolute rule will lead the Reich to freedom and prosperity. Cost, stability, uh, little cost, oh god. Because obviously, I really want to get this one done too. We really want to get this done. I just... This is difficult. This is really, really difficult. And someone did say in the comments that, like, someone else who played Spear basically had to cheat as well. Or just... I didn't cheat. I didn't cheat yet. But I had to cheat to get all this stuff done. So if you want to read about this one, please go right ahead. I think I read this one last... Wait. Hungry... Wait. Hungry sided with us. Okay! That sounds great! Awesome! Um, yeah, if you want to read this one, please go right ahead. I believe I read this one last time, so... Uh, we got the one done we wanted, so... Hey, it is what it is. Um, this is going to hurt us by 10%. So now we're going to be down to 60, 53%, which is not great. But I'll take it where we're at right now. Um, I just got to keep an eye for stability stuff, but the moderate. Uh, I th oh, crap. Uh, Theodor Oberlander gritted his teeth, approaching the podium after Spies Mann Erhard had given his due. It had been sure to the point and widely disrespectful, just like the man himself, nevertheless, had been as radical as one would expect, or he had been. It was baffling that Speer had chosen such a toe to lead his economic policy, but he had again never been practical. Oberlander allowed the scant applause to dissipate before addressing the assembly. Thank you, Herr Erhard. He spoke curtly and nodded to the economists, who did not look very happy to be thanked. I think all we all need to recognize is the value in what is being said. I am far from claiming the economy is perfect, however. I am quite worried about the scale in which Herr Erhard describes these changes. This revolution of the German economy that he suggests is, I must say, rather radical, he noted. Radical and very, very foolhardy. Herr Erhard, of course, has made great use of his PhD in econ economics. He is the Reich's Minister of Finance, after all. Oberlander conceded. But a PhD is something that helps primarily in classrooms and hypotheticals. This sort of plan that he suggests would work wonders in a bubble where there's only economics to consider. My own doctorate in finance, however, shows that I'm well experienced in the realities of putting such things into practice, unlike Herr Erhard. And my doctorate in agriculture, meanwhile, shows that I can tell you how Herr, 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 Herr Erhard would rob good German farmers of the chance to make a living. There's not a man in this building who does not remember the collapse in the 50s, how it brought our enemies to our doorsteps, and how it revealed the treachery of those we had once considered friends. Does Herr, Herr Erhard mean to bring the German economy to such a place of instability that it collapses again? When we consider the extent of, of Erhard's plan today, we must think of one feature of any revolution, whether political or economic. Oberlander glanced around the room, noticing a furious Ludwig Erhard. A revolution turns order on its head. The Reichstag begins to applaud. This campaign is... Hmm. Oh. Wait. Mm, why do we have... Are you doing this? Axel? When did you get you... Mm? Um, okay. Uh, this must have happened when uh, we tagged over from the AI after the Germans of War or something, maybe? I don't know. I, I, obviously, I'm not very interested, or invested, I should really say, about uh, the military right now. Uh, we've got bigger things to do. Hey, 61% is not too bad, actually. But it's going to go down to 51% soon, which is not very good. Not very good, my friends. And media manipulation would be very good. Alright, we can't definitely get that one yet, but we'll work on it later on. A moment of time. The current judicial inquiries and trials are winning down, winding down now that the worst offenders have been dealt with. The field's position is much more secure now. There are still dissident factions and secret societies to deal with, but nothing serious for the moment. But still... But Erhard's economic reforms and Schmidt's diplomatic tour has both been resounding successes for the Reich. Despite being in office for only a short time, Speer has already proven his worthiness in a, to rule a dozen times over. Now there is a matter of the NSDAP. Even after our extensive investigation of the party, it remains the largest power block in the Reich's politics. Tempting as it may be to simply wipe out the pack of useless sycophants and stubborn old fighters, we must accept their existence for the time being. Only a minority of the party supports Speer in any capacity, so we must navigate this obstacle with care. The connections run wide and deep in the Reich, and the last thing we want is another civil war. Very true. And we're going to do all eyes on us. To heck with the NSDAP. What do they matter? Or next to the will of the people and their Führer. Who are they to question the mandate? Rightfully claim that the Führer holds. Will they dare to question Hitler too, merely because they disregard with him on a few trifling, trifling matters? It is the collective will of the German people that are granted political dominance to the Führer, not the backroom politicking of career politicians. More than that, the entire world is watching. Doubtless they are awake of our weakened and divided state, circling like vultures of the beleaguered Reich. Well, they will soon see that our new Führer is no pale imitation of Hitler, but a true visionary and reformer. They shall see that Abbot Speer, alone of all the aspiring leaders of Deutschland, is a man they should look to befriend and defer to. Oh, look at all the stuff we've been building up here. Not bad. Not bad. 
a lot of good things. Well, we gotta keep spending this stuff too, just because uh, it's gonna cost us stuff later on. Hey, look at this! Yes, bug them. Yes, please. So we got the research done. So in which this one, uh, I'm not honestly sure what it gave us. More ex R and D experience growth. Um, that's not bad. I mean, that's really not bad at all. Are these all the same? Army organization factor, chance success, R and D research speed, experience growth, army defense factor, bugs research, political power probably would be good to do. That's that one. Bugs. We like bugs. Eat the bugs. Gehilfe. 64% chance of success, which is nice, but still not good enough for me. 59% go down to 49%. Oh, boy. All right, let's go and choose this one. All eyes on us. All right. The People's Fuhrer. The Fuhrer is not a capricious autocrat exercising absolute control over the lives of his people. He is a ran raised from amongst their number, given a commission from the people to rule responsibly and do his utmost to ensure the good health and prosperity of the Volksgemeinschaft. He was once a simple architect from a middle class family. He was not born into power, nor did he attain his position through dishonorable political machinations. Abba Shpia represents all that is greatest in the German people. And that greatness is made possible by you, the noblest of races. Sounds good, doesn't it? The Fuhrer, being unused to speech making, has largely left the matter of propaganda to Kiesinger. The internal politics of the Reich might be complex, but they don't concern the man in the street. What he and the tens of millions of his fellow Germans are care about is knowing that the Fuhrer loves, trusts, and respects them, and that he will do his utmost to help them. Shpia has resolved not to be remembered as an aloof, distant ruler. Instead, his legend will speak of a great man to the people, someone that great futures will aspire to emulate. Tresco's demands Lord Draft. They waited for the fear in the conference room. Shpia gave a sigh, walking down the corridor, feeling reluctant about t talking over the proposed draft reduction. He wanted to enjoy some coffee later in the, in the morning. At least it helped him bear with today. Shpia came into the room, drawing his cabinet ha and high command to stand and welcome him. Mein Führer. The security minister sharply saluted. After Speer returned the salute and sat down with him, the Prussian rose up to speak. My fear, I must raise the matter of lowering the draft to one year, and I must ask that it be decided on now. Speer blinked. Was that a demand? I can see that von Trusko, but I... I understand, mein Führer, but I, we cannot keep putting people into the ranks for too long. Having too many in the army will erode a professional corps. We must lower the draft soon. Speer sighed and raised his hands up to his chest in frustration. His cup was waiting for him and the steam rising from the coffee. I can see that, but can you please let me... No, mein Führer, I must insist, the Prussian said, stepping in his way. Not that we will not delay. If we keep dodging the issue, this will affect our army terribly over time. Fine, you have your wish. We do get more political power. I cannot accept. C'est la vie. A moment of time. <clears throat> I wonder, as often I did those days, how history might regard me. Outwardly, and to the rest of the world's estimation, I would have no choice but to be remembered as a great liberal fear. For weeks after the Civil War, I could look out the window of my office and the Reich Chancellery and see the crowds of well-wishers packing the plaza below. From my lofty perch, <clears throat> they appeared a great seething mass on, a, on the busiest of days. Individuals melted away, assimilated into the great din of humanity. Unable to pick out their faces, I was well aware in those moments that this was people power made manifest. That same tide that had swept my predecessor into power and changed the fate of Germany forevermore. It was impressive, mighty, and utterly terrifying. They chanted my name, saluted my presence, and demanded of me things I could never be certain of delivering in those troubled days. My thoughts after those occasions invariably turned inwards, far from the adulation of cheering crowds. Within the very buildings I designed for the glory of the Reich, the party was gathering strength. The post-war legal inquiries carried out by the Gestapo had sapped its strength, but it remained the largest power block in the Reich. The workers and disaffected youth might have outnumbered them a thousandfold, but the party held power second only to myself. If I wholeheartedly followed the lead of my cabinet and embraced the popular movement that claimed to have my full support, I would have permanently permanently alienated this pillar of stability for the Reich. On the other hand, moving too close to them might have undermined my popular support, owing to their highly conservative agenda that I would need to adhere to. To admire the complexity of the situation, even in writing it is difficult. But I must preserve my words for my posterity so that future generations will understand my choice. Perhaps it will be centuries before these words are seen, but no secret of this magnitude can be concealed forever. What shall I be? A hero? A savior? A liberal Führer? Yeah. Oh, token reformed, yeah, absolutely. Trusco's demands, Lord Ruff. Just as Speer reluctantly agreed to Trusco's point, someone rose up, pushing away the chair noisily. It was Shona, and he was not pleased. Trusco, are you mad? You can't pause. I already have. The Führer has given me his approval. Trusco stated flatly to him. Speer shook his head, and Shona gritted his teeth and shook his head as well. Then he turned to Speer. Mein Führer, he said with a salute. When, his hand, with his, when he let his hand down, he said, I must encourage you to repeal it. We cannot lower the draft now, it would weaken our army. Trusco turned to Speer and told him, No, my fear. Lowering the draft will help our army. It will not, Bontrusco. The army needs more men at this moment. Our fallen needs more men. For what? We're not in a great need of manpower right now. That doesn't matter. We must maintain our numbers, Shona told him. He glanced back at his fear. My fear. I must insist against it. You're suggesting that now? I just approved it, Speer replied, hoping, hoping it would disencourage him. 
It will be difficult, but it's a smaller price to pay than having to put up with a loss of strength in numbers. That is something we can make up for in the quality of our men and our officers. We do not need a multitude of men. All right, both of you have a point, Shpia interrupted, seeking to put an end to this and get his cup of coffee. He said and then said, I will not take back my word, Shona. I've changed my mind, Tesco. No. I've made up my mind. Do not bother me again. Anything down here? I mean, I am... As some might say, I am quite anal about this. Look how much that costs! Ah! Oh, so much cost! Tesco's demands lower draft. I thought more would pop up down here, but the decision was sealed, and the lowering of the draft was realized. The Fuhrer was understandably relieved to see that he could relax after all that had happened despite his earlier reluctance. He enjoyed his cup of coffee, which he so wanted before, just as the rest of his cabinet enjoyed the victory in seeing his pass. Schmidt and Ehad both pulled their cigarettes and the cigar to quietly celebrate this victory for their partner in the army, much to the light displeasure of the Fuhrer. Trusco and Speidel respectively gave their thanks to the Fuhrer for keeping his word. It ended in their, in their favor, and it was only appropriate for them to give some credit to their leader, no matter how reluctant he was. Only Sean fumed, unwilling to stand behind or being in the same room as those who opposed him with a fear who let him down in a huff. He stormed out of the chancellery, much to the subtle joy of those who wished to spite him. And when news came to the German people about the lower draft, there was much reason for them to rejoice. Families and friends were happy to know that their sons would not have to give up a part of their lives to serve the fatherland. Although the conservative elements of the country eventually gave their protest against the new policy, there was nothing to stop the tide of joy that swept over the people onto a brighter future. Good. Even more political power and, and political power. That's why I chose this one over here, too. Well, we're supposed to get political power, but whatever. This is not easy. This is not an easy campaign. Trying to be as reformist as possible is probably not what we're going to be able to do, but it has been many years since German wives have been seen carrying full bags of groceries home. So long, in fact, the sight of such has made headlines across news across the Reich and homes throughout Germany. Families have been buying, busying themselves clearing out unused cupboards to make room for a week's worth of food. Once a purse full of marks would barely feed one person for a day, let alone five now, the same amount of money can feed a family for a fortnight or more. One is yet to hear parents scolding their children for overstuffing themselves, given that activity has quickly become a favorite pastime of the long-deprived German masses. Food is not the only thing Germans find themselves truly enjoying what's more, electronics. <clears throat> Cars and luxury goods have all become much more affordable. Many a household has recently been graced with a new TV, while pedestrian congestion has greatly been eased as a number of citizens owning private transportation has increased massively. Petrol companies in particular are quite pleased with this development. Businesses are big and small are finally turning a profit, and some semblance of prosperity is returning to the least devastated parts of the Reich. This upturn must not be overstated, however, as Eha constantly reminds the Fuhrer. While many citizens have risen above the poverty line, many more remain beneath it, lacking the means to actually benefit from their new Reichsmark. Charity can only achieve so much, and there remains so much to do as Speer hopes to elevate the working classes from their, from their depression. It's a start, but das Schwer das Damocles. Oh, we gotta do the- oh boy. Hmm. As well as everything that has been going so far, there's a catch. There's always been a catch. Galen brings yet more concerning news to the Fuhrer's desk. There's something else, something beyond mere seditious students and mutinous officers. A storm is brewing in the dark corners of the forgotten knaves of the Reich. Even as the clouds of civil strife pass over the far horizon, her uh, shadows fall upon us once more, whispers of something far more dangerous and destabilizing them that few protests have reached Galen's ears as has a new name. A single name, uttered in awe by the downtrodden and in fear of the mighty, a name that will make and shake the very foundations of the Reich and challenge all that we stand for. It feels like this chapter is like closing on us. I thought this really feels like a uh, chapter. Okay, so if that makes if that's the case, then we gotta just go ahead and do this one real quick as well. Um, do that. Go and stop training. Do that. We'll probably just invade these guys as well. So I might just do this one off screen just because we've already done it earlier in the campaign. If we lose ten percent more, we'll still be okay. But mm, we still have only eight. Do we have any more here? Nope, that's fine. And happy October 1st, everyone. Happy, happy, happy October 1st. Nice. The Modo Colony. Come on, please give us something new here. Anything else? Anything else? No. We're strongly reformist. Okay, so can we choose the next one too? Oh, we cannot. Okay, that sucks. That really sucks. So it looks like. We'll complete this one. I'm going to go ahead and reinvade Austin off screen, and then we'll close out this chapter together. But if you enjoyed this episode and the extra one and a half, about basically over an hour I spent off screen trying to at least complete one of these focuses, please do consider leaving a like, subscribe if you're new, check out my Discord link in the description below, and I'll see you tomorrow when we're ready for the next chapter of Speer's Reformers Campaign. Thanks for watching. Have a great rest of your day.